Hey friends, in today's video, my exploration of gouache continues. We're going to work on a gouache slash watercolor uh, floral still life together, and I'll show you every single step along the way. Hey friends, welcome back. Welcome to my living room. My name is Shayla Campbell and around here we make art and it's fun, not scary. And I've been painting with gouache a whole lot more lately. I've sort of been changing up my style and working on a lot of floral still lifes. And I thought I'd share another one with you since this is really what I'm working on as an artist or just as a person who likes to paint right now. This is what I'm really into. And so I'm trying to at least share one or two of these every month on the channel. Uh, I hope you're enjoying them. It's a little more in depth, but the nice thing is I've started doing these real time videos where I'm not speeding anything up or taking anything out. So I'm able to really get quite in depth, talk you through the entire painting. This is a long one. It's gonna take me about, I think about 45 minutes, maybe more. So let's just jump right in. I'll get started. We'll talk about colors, uh, the gouache that I'm using. You can do this in watercolor. Um, so yeah, let's get started. Hey friends, welcome to my desk. We're gonna complete another gouache painting today. I'm going to do sort of a quick painting, as I said, and try to simplify, simplify, simplify. That's my new thing, not doing too much. I'm working on hot pressed paper. I've got a beautiful Canson block, a little bit larger, but that just means I tend to work the same size for my subject, but leave a little more negative space. This is my palette, which I've actually just washed to get rid of all the mixed paint that I had on there. But you can see I keep the spots of like, there's the white, I've got kind of my cool colors over here, cobalt blue, um, indigo, olive green, Windsor green, and Van Dyke brown. Some dummy put some <laughs> Windsor green over here, but I don't wanna waste it, we'll leave it there. <laughs> and then I've got magenta red, that um, peach blush color, what is that called? Pale rose blush, and I have Naples yellow and Naples yellow light. And I have two glasses of clean water, paper towel for blotting my brush. And what size are you? A number eight round brush, my favorite. I'll also be using my favorite little filbert brush. Uh, this guy right here I'll do, I'll use for quite a bit of this painting. So those are my brushes that I'm gonna reach for. Now I'm gonna put the photo up on the screen, the photo that I'll be working from. The thing is with, um, when you do your drawing and when you do your painting, it's almost like you wanna squint your eyes at that photo and just look for the large areas of shadow or color, the large highlights. And as you can see on this one, there's a big white area light area over on the right. Um, so let's start with the shape of the jar. And this is also your chance to kind of decide how large things are going to be. So I do not want this jar to get too large and I don't want to place it right at center. So those are the very first things I'm thinking about. Don't let it get too big and don't place it right in the center. And there is like the general jar shape there. You know what, that's probably a little low on the page as well. I tend to put things too low and then regret it later. So let's move you up a bit. There's the jar shape. I'm already making a mess. So we're looking for large shapes, large areas of color, etc. Okay, and there's more flowers going off on that side, so it's also a good idea to leave lots of space over on the left. So there's my water line there. I've got this big block of dark green. I've got this big highlight here, a little bit of a dark line of the water there. Uh, bah, 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 bah. We've got another highlight there. Lots of dark, 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 lots of stems, few more stems over here, cutting in dark area there, and maybe one stem over there. So we've got kind of these big color areas and then these dark areas, and then we've got our light section. So squint your eyes, just look for the absolute um, largest shapes. We've got another highlight right across the front there. And then there is going to be, 
And then there's a bit of a highlight on there as well. Okay, there's going to be that one flower right at the front there. These flowers have quite a large stamen with shorter petals. And we are just going to try to capture the general shape. We don't need to capture every flower just as it is in this photograph. We just wanna get them kind of the general look. And what I really like are these long stems and branches that are just going off and out and they're so wild. You see, you start with the jar and you're making it quite small. And then actually, once you add these big flowers in, you're taking up a lot of that page. So that is why you really don't want to um, make the jar too large right off the hop. Another dark area in through here. There we go. And I actually even feel like the jar is a bit large and all I need to do to fix that is just bring those sides in and keep my, my same sort of highlights and lowlights. So let's go like that. That's looking better already. We've got that large highlight through there. We've got that dark area there can see another dark bit back there, another dark bit there, dark, dark with that big highlight there, dark, 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 and then, yeah, I think that looks pretty good, highlight there. So there's my jar, it got a bit smaller, we're going to have this tangle of branches through here, that's going to look really good. And then these flowers can probably get a bit bigger really, but that'll happen as I paint. Um, I'm just going to, I'm not going to paint any of the background, the window or anything. I'm just gonna put like a general shadow over here and say that the background is kind of there. But what I really wanna do is mostly just concentrate on painting these flowers in their beautiful jar. And we're gonna have like one long guy going way up that looks good. I want to change the shape of the jar slightly to make it a little bit more realistic. Great. And then this will be so bright, this highlight, that there won't even be really any difference between what is like in behind and what is the, the highlight on the jar. So the jar will almost become the background, if you know what I mean. Okay, lovely. Just took a second to close the blinds and let's get painting. I, I'm excited. I always kind of want to move away from the drawing portion. I really like to be working with the paint. That is my preference. And actually I'm going to lighten this up a bit just by running that, running that eraser over it. There. Okay. Let's mix. We are ready to, I think what I want to do is start with the jar. And for me, that's going to mean starting with the greens and the stems. And so I will wet that lovely olive green. I'll bring you over here. Maybe mix a little Windsor green in there. We want this really dark color. So actually a little bit of indigo will be helpful. And I've got some Van Dyke Brown there as well. My Van Dyke Brown is getting like a little bit clumpy. I need to get a fresh tube. I just think it's too dried out. Anywho, not to worry right now. So remember, we're going for, please don't let me drip on the page. We're going for large areas, low detail. So what I wanna do basically here is just color this all really dark. And we're getting quite loose with this one. So we can do, we can definitely do like some sort of hint at stems by having some lines there. But then we're also just gonna kind of go like that and put some brush marks, make it messy. 
And you can kind of do some little marks like horizontal and that'll kind of indicate leaves, which I think looks good. There we go. And we can always add some lighter stuff in later. I'm also going to do some thin lines along here of dark green, leaving some negative space. See how that already makes it look like the jar? Just by doing lines, we are indicating the, um, the ridges on the top of that jar. So simple thing that we can do. Let's pick up a slightly lighter green, bring in a lighter green stem there and a leaf, and then we're gonna have you go up there, a few more stems, and then we are just gonna leave most of that open for our highlight. Great. Over here, we're going to complete the ring, the rims, sort of rounded rim of that jar by leaving lots of negative space. See how that kind of connects it. And then over here, it's much lighter. So we really don't need to do much of anything. Then what I wanna do is um, mix a bit of a greeny gray so that I can start painting some of this water surface. And so I'm gonna come over here and wet the white. Picking my, I've got a bit of green in the water, which is fine with me, because as I said, I want a bit of a greeny gray. And then I'll mix in a bit of that Van Dyke Brown. That gives me not a bad color, actually. If you need to mix in a touch of indigo, neutralize it ever so slightly. And then we just want lots of water in there as well, because it doesn't need to be a very opaque color. Okay, so let's see what we can do. If we come over here, we want to leave a bit of a highlight. And I also want to give some color. I think with gouache, like watercolor, it is still important um, to make some of your highlights white. And that means having that page, that white paper show through. At least for me, that's what it means. I think painting white on top of other colors, it never really gives you the best effect. The best effect comes from leaving that page showing through and that is your highlight. So what we want here is for some of these highlights on the surface of the water and especially right here across the front to be just white page. So I'm actually just using water now and I'm coming along and kind of mussing things up. And I'm gonna add some mussed up bits over here. But then you can see I'm leaving my highlight. I'm going to I'm gonna erase actually a bit because I've got way too much pencil here and it's gonna mess me up. There we go. I'm gonna take my gray my greeny gray, I might even mix in a bit more green. Now I'm gonna go like that. And I'm gonna make that bit on the jar that's a bit darker. But I'm leaving that white area showing through. So you see the paper actually makes the best highlight. At least that's how I feel about it. <laughs> okay, there we go. And then that kind of curves down and becomes the side of the jar over there. Cool, I think that's looking really good. And we've, we're gonna leave, really I should get rid of some of this pencil as well because you're gonna really see it in the highlight. Ooh, I mussed up my paint a bit, but that's okay. We want to make sure that we're leaving like a nice white light there. Great. And then we've got a beautiful highlights up here. That's looking really good. That's going to help this really look like there is, it is water. We're looking at the surface of water. And actually I'd like to darken in behind here a bit. So I will darken that ever so slightly. 
like beyond the curve of the water is going to be a bit darker. I think that's fine. There. That looks good. Yeah, and then the water is lighter here. And then let's come down and do the same thing down here, looking for large areas now. So we've got this big, large, dark area right here below the surface of the water. There's a some green reflected there. And I think that looks really good if we just put a big splotch. We don't need to get crazy on the detail. Maybe bring it up here a little. Ooh, I like how that's bleeding in. The wet paint is doing the work for me. It's giving me a nice natural color transition. Um, let's bring that dark color down. Maybe put another splotch there. Yeah, and then we've got another dark area over here, which we had marked out earlier. I'm gonna put a little more brown in my gray there. And we'll bring that up onto the side. Kind of make it look like the side of the jar. And then I've got a dark area right in there. I can just kind of do a little semicircular area. We've got a big highlight over here. Great, I think that's all we really need as far as really, really dark, big dark areas. Now what we need to do is make sure to leave a bit of a highlight across the front and start bringing those stems down. So actually for the stems, I think I would like to be using a nice pointed brush. So let us do that. Wet that brush, make sure I'm able to pick up lots of paint, get that olive green. And then I wanna just start making like these very perfectly imperfect. And they almost look on this side like they're like bending towards the left a little. So we just kind of want to capture that a bit. Can really just be like a big old mess, right? Like we're not going to worry about getting every stem in there. And I'm going to grab that Windsor green or maybe that indigo and darken it up a bit. And we can always put some lighter stems on top afterwards. Some of those stems go right down to the base of the jar. Make sure to leave the highlight that you laid out for yourself. pretty good amount of stemmage, I think. <laughs> Maybe a few more thin ones. There's some thin lines, that worked. And then take a damp, clean brush and we're just going to blend a bit. Okay, and then I wanna let that dry. Actually, this highlight is probably too large. Let's make it just like a line there. That's looking better. Great. I think I need to bring this down a little lower since my highlight kind of moved lower. So bring that mass of weedy stems down here a bit. I think that's looking really cool. And we basically just need to put some of our lighter gray in there, but I want it to dry a little bit so that um, we don't get too much green in the sort of light gray pockets that we're going to need. 
We've done a lot of the hard work now. We've left a nice highlight uh, to show the ridges on the rim of the jar. We've done some nice highlights on the water, so some really good work with that water. We've done nice um, highlights on the glass to show that this is indeed glass. And we've captured this big mass of stems and we actually have the really easy job later um, because we went really dark with our stems of maybe just adding in some lighter um, highlights on some of those stems and that'll help a lot and that's really all we'll need to do to really bring those to life. I'm gonna cover that guy up there's really no highlight right there. Okay and then I think we're just gonna move up here and start working on these flowers and the flowers are gonna be a lot of fun. We don't have to capture a lot of detail we just want to capture kind of the color and the general shape. We're not spending all day on this painting it's just going to be like a one hour quick painting. So let's mix up the color that we're going to use for these and it's going to be a beautiful yellow um, to yellow almost orange. I've got Naples yellow here which I think is going to work really beautifully. I can maybe mix a little bit of magenta into that Naples yellow. Let's just wet the magenta. There we go, that's looking really pretty. And then I'm actually going to add a little brown over on this side of the palette. Got a little bit of brown there, lots of Naples yellow. That gave me a nice dark color that I am going to use for the center of some of these flowers. And I'm just going to start placing centers wherever there is a flower, wherever I can see a large flower. There's one, I could even darken that more, I think. There's another guy right there. Another one right there. And the center, the stamen is actually quite large on these. Got one right here. Some of them you really can't see the center, that they're sort of on an angle. So we've just got a couple over here where you can see it. There. And then there's going to be some sort of facing away. All right, let's leave that to dry. wonder how this guy is doing. If we picked up a bit of our gray, I'd like to just do like a very light, yeah, that's kind of working, light wash of yellowy gray color right across here. Got nice gray, that's working blend it with that kind of dark color that's on the side there. Great. I don't mind getting a bit of blending because I think there's always like that kind of look in the water where it's like it's green but it's gray but it's green <laughs> everything's kind of blend like the colors look sort of blended when you look through a glass there i'm happy with that kept a bit of a highlight, which is great. But we've also got that nice gray. And while it is still wet, you can also place some like just blotches and those will bleed out a little, which I think is good. I am going to carefully erase a little bit. I don't want there to be too much pencil surrounding. It's like I want a pencil guide, but it also gets in my way. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay. And then I think I'm gonna keep using this filbert because I don't want the flowers getting too precious. And I'm going to wet some more of this Naples yellow. I've got little yellow blotches like all over the palette. It just shows that once your paint gets kind of messy, you don't always know where you actually have color. <laughs> and that's 
why it's good to wash your palette every once in a while so you can see what you're working with. Okay, I'm gonna mix a little bit of that blush in, a little bit of white wouldn't hurt. There, that's giving me a nice vibrant color. And let's just see, let's see how it looks on there. This brush might be too big to do this, but sometimes I find working with a larger brush is good for me because it doesn't allow me to get too precious. Like I can't get too detailed, which is a good thing. And then we're just gonna leave some gaps between the petals, just like in the photo, but we don't need to follow like every exact gap. There's just funny gaps and that's the main thing. There's also sections where all the petals kind of look like one big petal. So those are the types of things we want to capture. And if you want to experiment with what brush you're using, by all means, I will probably switch my brush at some point, but I'm just starting with this guy to, um, you know, just make sure that I'm not getting too <laughs> serious. Kind of works for me. Like how it's sort of messy this looks. This guy has a nice crown of petals around him. And we will come back in and we will add some darker um, bits on these petals to make them look more realistic. But for now, I like just getting the shape and then we can work on the other details once that shape is there. enjoying these um, floral painting tutorials, friends, I just wanted you to know that I do have some e-courses. They're all about flowers. I have a beginner level uh, watercolor e-course, which really gets into all the nitty gritty of like paper types and different kinds of brushes and paint and the color wheel. Um, and then I have a, a secondary watercolor course where we really just talk about how to paint all these different flowers and we get into, you know, finding your own style, uh, sort of that um, more advanced content. And then I have a floral illustration e-course as well, because I really believe that illustration is, and drawing is at the base of so much of, of what we do as artists. So if any of those are of interest to you, head over to Shada Campbell Courses to check those out. Um, it means so much to me to be able to produce this free content. Um, but on YouTube, what we are focusing on typically is like making a painting, you know, like today we're, we're setting out to paint this one image. And in the courses, it's a little more linear as far as making sure that you're confident, you know, with your supplies. Um, and that, you know, this isn't something I say on YouTube very often. It's like a little peek behind the curtain, but YouTube is, is I'm focusing on entertainment. Even though I want to educate, the focus is, you know, entertainment education. And so in the courses, uh, the focus is, of course, education, <laughs> but it's still fun. It's still like painting with a friend. So you can always check those out. And my pricing also is very fair. There's lots of things um, that I don't usually mention. Well, I guess I'm just telling all my secrets today, but like something that you'll never see on this channel is any advertisement for any type of weight loss supplement or any product. I, I really dislike when I'm listening to my favorite podcast and then it's like an advertisement for Noom. It's just weight loss watchers for millennials, basically. Like it's all the same. The weight loss industry is just a big mess that I don't want any part of. I would never tell you, I would never want to take money for telling you to change your body. So, you know, that's something that I will never do on this channel. And another thing I will never do is like those crazy unfair internet prices 
where it's like, my course is $800, but only this week it's on sale for 97% off. I just think it's just basically trying to make you afraid. Like, oh my gosh, if I don't buy it right now, I, I'm, I'm going to have to pay $800. I'm never going to do that. My courses are fairly priced. And, um, you know, if they're not on sale, they're a really good price. <laughs> Everything is in the 60 to $150 range. And then you can bundle stuff for a better deal. Anywho, shadedcampbellcourses.com if you wanna check it out. I've got a lot of color in here now for those flowers and I didn't follow the photo exactly, but there's kind of this burst of yellow back in this corner and then some flowers kind of following a line over here. What I wanna start doing is putting in some of the greenery. That's going to give a nice movement and flow to this um, piece. So let's get on to that. I'm going to take that olive green mixed with just a little bit of indigo mixed with just a hint of Windsor green. I've got this really nice dark green. And I haven't said this in today's video yet, but with gouache, you always wanna mix lots and lots of water into your paint. They will come out of the tube, the consistency of toothpaste and you want to use them at the consistency of water so just be aware of that okay so again we're just kind of going for big areas there's going to be a lot of green in through here and then the stems will become sort of more singular as we go outside of the flowers but in here this could basically all just be green as far as i'm concerned it doesn't have to be that separate That's working, that's working for me. I'm still doing lines because I think in some areas you can definitely see through and see that it is um, just all a bunch of stems, but in other areas for the sake of making this piece not look too messy, I just wanna do like a big blob of green and that's what I'm doing right here. So there we go, that looks good. Another thing is you can do all these like thin little brush strokes and then you can come back in with a damp brush and kind of muss them up and blend them all together. I'm ready to start taking some of these guys out over in this direction. And what I'm gonna do is kind of try to get that shape right off the bat. There's sort of these knobbly little stems that look really cool. And so I am just sort of wiggling that brush a little bit. I think it would look cool if some of them were more transparent. So let's just use water and that is looking really good. And then for some of the lighter ones, you can actually just almost pull from the paint that's on the page and take it down here. That's going to give a nice look of depth to your piece. If you have some in behind that are just done with a lighter and it's just sort of barely there, I think that looks really good. And not every stem needs to connect. Some of them can kind of just be going off and out and they can look really, really lovely in the fact that they actually don't connect. I'm gonna maybe make a really greeny yellow over here. So just take a little olive and a little Naples yellow and we'll do some really light. Yeah, that's looking good. I like that color rinse the brush and just use a bit of water to just muss it up. 
I think that looks so good. Having it be different transparencies, again, it really helps with the movement of the piece as well as the depth. And there's one back there that's kind of white, so I'm just gonna leave that and I'll work on, I'll figure out how to paint a white <laughs> flower up there later on but even just leaving it as negative space, I think kind of works since it is so light. Did a few there, then rinse that brush. And we're just going to go like that. Have you heard the expression, sometimes it's about what you don't paint? What you choose not to paint is just as important as what you do choose to paint. So here I'm choosing to leave some areas unpainted in order to give me this really light ephemeral look, the look of a wild bouquet by choosing to not paint in some of the little bits of the stem, I, I, I capture movement and motion and I just capture the wild nature of this, of this bouquet. And that I think is so important. using a damp brush with a bit of paint on it to just muss things up in here. Bring everything together and give me that painterly look that I'm after. I want everything to look, you know, connected when this is done. painting some leaves there and I'm choosing not to paint a stem on them. Again, it's what you choose not to paint. That is just as important. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to paint some leaves and they are not going to be connected to anything. The stem is almost just so small. It cannot be seen. And I think that's great. Let's do something kind of sticking right out, coming towards the viewer. And there can be breaks in that stem as if you're not quite seeing everything. Again, motion, movement. I can release some more pigment into this wet area. Then the wet will just do the work for me by releasing everything in a really um, natural sort of way. There we go. Sometimes we're doing just a dark splotch of green, sometimes a lighter bit. And I think just by having both, it looks really, really good and really realistic. Now I'm just taking that wet brush and maybe just a hint of green and just putting some like really thin little bits going off in every which way here. I'm definitely gonna want some more over here. With just water, I'm basically just doing my initial outline. And then I can come in with that really light green, that mix of Naples yellow and a bit of olive green. And I'm just going to 
make some areas thick, but others barely there. It is about what you don't paint just as much as it is about what you choose to paint. Think about when you look at your piece, what am I not going to paint? What am I going to leave out? It's not your job to be a camera. It's your job to interpret the photo or the still life or whatever it is you're painting in your own unique, interesting way from your perspective. So what are you going to choose to keep in to help you tell your own unique story? And what are you going to choose to leave out? Okay, I think this is looking really good. One thing I need to do is just muss up this a little bit so that that green kind of connects. I'm definitely gonna need some more green up in here to connect these guys. And I think actually, since I've done so much light, one thing, oops, I got way too much green. In, I mean, if you can probably can't see my palette, let's flip back to the green side. I got way too much blue in there. Let's mix in some more olive, a little bit of brown. What I want to do is add some more dark colors. I got lots of light green now. I want some dark to make things really pop and stand out. So let's darken you up here. really thick, messy stem here. Adding just more green down here so that everything looks joined. Adding some green in here. And then some of these flowers need their stem and their sepal. So that is what I'm gonna do now people on you. It's basically just a circle and then I kind of muss it up and add that stem. There we go. We definitely want some of the stems going in front of flowers, stuff like that. I'm going to put something going through there. I think I need some very dark up here and then we'll do maybe one more flower there as well. Okay, I'm about to go change my water and just let this dry for a sec but I kind of just want to take a messy, like a wet, not messy, a wet brush and just like, what happens if I just like go like that? Especially kind of close in, maybe not out here as much, but like close by the, the flowers. Then I just made one more leaf that's not connected because I like the unconnected leaves. 
the ghost leaves. Those look really cool. And I think it looks like what I'm really, it represents something that I do see when I look at the painting and when I look at the photograph, sorry. I'm gonna put some kind of more defined shapes in through there. Okay, so now I'm gonna go wash my brush. <laughs> if you've seen that other video, it's like, she doesn't know when to stop, stop. I'm gonna go wash my brush. I'm going to um, clean my water, get fresh water. And then we're just going to work a bit on the shadow and the foreground here, the table, and some of the flower petals. And then we're pretty much done. So it's come together pretty simply and we'll put in a few little white flowers on some of those blossoms as well. Oh, and we need a few highlights in the uh in the, with the stems. But that's not too much. We've done a lot. I need a bit of green in this low light as well. Cool. Okay, okay, okay. I'm going to wash my brushes and get clean water. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, clean brushes, fresh water. While everything is drying, I'd like to grab a bit of brown, work my gray out a little bit here. I'm making a mess on this palette, but that's okay. For my gray, it can really just be a mix of all the colors that are sitting here. If you want it to be a bit of a warmer gray, add a little bit more yellow or brown or even a bit of magenta. And um, I just wanna give a nice light color across the base and then add a bit of a shadow as well. So there we go, that gray looks pretty good. I'm mixing in a lot of water. I just want this to be like a very light wash of color. And with gouache, you do need to mix in even more water than you would with your watercolors to make it transparent like this. So here is my base. And I just wanna get that like very painterly, like broken edges. Where is my end of my table going to be? Maybe just up here around near the water line, but a little below it. I'm trying to do this fairly quickly before it dries. I don't want there to be like dried marks on there. Like, you know, when you're painting, if you let the pigment dry on the page, you can't really manipulate it the same way as you can when it is wet. There we go, that's looking good. Maybe grab a bit of a darker color and just put a little bit darker sort of underneath where the vase meets the table. Very subtle. And then that will be the shadow over there. We'll put our little shadow across this way since we know in the photograph the window is over here. I'm doing some kind of wet vertical strokes so that the sort of table isn't too like real, I guess. I don't know if that maybe looks worse actually. <laughs> so I'm just drying stuff. I'm gonna let that dry and then put in the shadow. And I think the shadow will help sort of ground everything. Yeah, <laughs> I'm drying stuff, I don't know. Okay. Let's start working on some of these. Uh, how are you? That's pretty dry. So let's grab a really light green. I'm gonna even use a bit of white in this and a bit of olive green, a bit of that Naples yellow, a bit more white maybe, because I want a real, real light color. And then we'll, all I'm gonna do, 
Come on, pigment. I need it to be nicely pigmented. I can't use like a um, partially transparent one for this is I want to, where it's dark, add some really light bits like that. And that just makes everything look so much more realistic to have some of the light stems in there amongst the dark. You're gonna be real light. Yes, you are there. Put that in. Yeah. And then the same thing up here, but a little bit less so, we're going to have like some little bits that we can see that are lighter, but not a lot. That area is really quite dark. I think that's probably all we need. Remember, it's about what you don't paint. If we put too much, it's all just going to look the same and then we've done nothing. And then we're gonna go in here and do some really thin little lines. Here and just do like one messy one there. Using this really light color to like finish off that bit at the top of some of these. Okay. Now we sort of want to do the same thing now that we've added some little highlights. We want to do the same kind of thing on the petals, uh, but we're going to go darker. Um, so first things first, I want to do the little a little curve on the stamen, and I need a really dark pretty much almost brown. So let me get some brown in here. Still got lots of Naples yellow there. I wanna get it quite deep and dark and we're just gonna go like that. I think even more brown, I think it can be quite dark. And we're just gonna do a semicircle. And then maybe a little dot in the center. I think even darker. So what I'm going to do is mix in a little bit of indigo. Semicircle. That one I kind of messed up the shape, so I just went all out and made the whole thing dark, which is fine. It's gonna be fine. This one just has like a little hint of a stamen. Something like that it goes a long way. And I think that's pretty much all we need on there. If we feel like we need to, we can add a highlight back in on that one. Um, totally up to you. You know, that's not a big deal that we lost a little bit of the highlight there. It's just one flower. 
And then I want to do similar stuff on the, uh, on the petals. So taking like a really dark blend of Naples yellow. So Naples yellow with like a little hint of red, hint of magenta, hint of Van Dyke brown or red brown if you have it. And some more Naples yellow. I've got it all over the palette for some reason. <laughs> okay, there we go. Let's try this. So we just need to put like a little bit of that darker color on some of the petals. We don't need to do a lot. Again, less is definitely more with this one. All I'm doing is darkening some petals, but leaving lots of them, lots and lots, not dark. A few little thin brush strokes on some of these ones that are sort of on an angle, I think looks good. Yeah, I almost feel like I've gone too far with it. So let's stop there. I really don't want to um, to lose like all that nice light yellow. Less is more. It is about what you don't paint as much as it is about what you do paint. So let's just see what if we actually took a bit of white and did some light yellow highlights. As much as I think anything white needs to be left, you know, anything left as paper showing through, a light yellow probably um, is fine. So what if we just did, you know, some, some light color on some, and we actually went over some of the green, how would that look? Yeah, I think that kind of works. Don't want to do a lot of that because I think it's going to look sort of messy, but a little might be just the thing, like one or two blotches like that, I think just gives a little bit more life. Okay, cool. Okay guys, I am almost done. I think the only thing left for me to do is add a bit of a shadow here. So let's take a little bit more brown and a little bit more indigo into that gray. A Little bit of indigo, a little bit of brown. And we're just doing linear brush strokes, almost a dry brush there as the paint sort of comes off my brush and I get that dry brush look, I am not mad at that. And I almost want it to be like, you can't see where the vase stops and the shadow begins. 
So it's all kind of blended there. That I like that. And we just have some messy marks as well. Great. Yeah, I am really happy. I'm really pleased with this. I um, This is all new to me and it is still a challenge for me to do something like this on camera, uh, doing sort of a more intricate painting and working in gouache, but it's really what I'm into right now and I'm really happy to share it because that's what I've always done is shared, you know, what I'm up to and I don't want to stop doing that. I want to keep sharing what is what is going on with me artistically. And so I just thank you for being here and for hanging out and putting up with me. And I, I hope you're enjoying. I hope you're getting something out of these videos. Um, if you have any questions about the e-course or Patreon, both of which are great ways to support all this free content, feel free to DM me on Instagram or email me anytime. Um, I'm always, always around answering questions. And yeah, okay, I'm gonna stop. I am stopping. We're not even gonna get into that whole redonkulous. She's stopping, she's not. <laughs> And we're just going to set this down right now and I will sign it. Oops. And I'll just hit the whole desk, shake the camera. There it's done. And I'm quite pleased with it. Some things that I really like about this are the movement and the glass, the look of the glass and the water, there's things I think could that could be better, but overall, I'm quite happy with it. Um, one thing that I missed is there should have been a bit more of a highlight, it, like a, not a highlight, but there should have been some relief in here, just some negative space. And if this was an acrylic painting, I would just go in and paint, you know, white and <laughs> like the back, like the paper, but I can't do that and that's fine. So I will just leave it and that is okay. Um, but it's just something that I see now that the piece is finished that uh, I can't go back on and that's okay. And maybe that just needs to be like not bright white there. Just a little softer, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying, enjoying this new sort of style and working with gouache. And if you have any questions, please comment below and I'll, I'll try to um, reply to comments within the first 24 hours or 48 hours at least. So thank you friends for being here. Head to shadycampbellcourses.com if you're interested in any of the e-learning and taking a deeper dive into some of these topics. And head over to patreon.com slash shadycampbell if you are interested in weekly bonus content, things like worksheets and extra monthly videos. Thanks for hanging out with me today, guys. I will see you soon.